9 and 10, he said, I am the door. And by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. By the way, we show in our Bible lessons, Jesus, all the way from Genesis, all the way to Revelation. We can show him in the scriptures. <clears throat> but anyway, look what he said. Sin and life at the door, and unto thee shall be his desires. This speaks of the sin nature. This is what happens to them. Cain talked with his brother Abel, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up and <clears throat> against Abel, his brother, and he slew him. No particular reason. This word, when he talked with his brother in verse 8, that means they had a down-to-earth discussion, and they come to a mutual agreement that they was not going to agree. That's basically what it means. They kind of share one another. And it's really sad that you've got a lot of people that don't trust God enough to give their life to Jesus. So Cain didn't want to do that. The sin nature was in him. What does the sin nature do? It resists God, doesn't want anything to do with God, for the natural man receiveth not the things of God. And that's where the whole thing went. What well, kind of surprised me Look what it says in verse 11 and 12. And now art thou cursed above the earth, and which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. And when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond thou shalt be in the earth. And uh, Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that find me shall slay me. So the verse says, 16, that Cain left the presence of God. This is where people do today. And they claim to know so much because he left the presence of God. If we took you into a little bit deeper about Cain, you could find out that in chapter 4, he actually... <clears throat> the sixth man from him was called Lamech, and Lamech is the first one of polygamy. He's the first had multiple wives against God. If you look in chapter 4, you can find out that his first son was called Enoch also, and that's not the one made to rapture. It's different. But his first son was named after the city he built. So there's a city named Enoch. There's two people named Enoch in our Bible. One Enoch in chapter 5, he made the rapture. Okay, this is a different one. But if you look at Cain, he didn't make a good decision. His brother was a recluse, and his brother actually, the word and the name Enoch actually means there, if you look it up in the Hebrew, I hang myself. So Enoch was the son of Cain who slew his brother. He left the presence of God, and his children was raised up as cursed children, and he actually hang himself. I don't want to go into that deeper, but we can go back to Jude now. I can tell you that things did not work out for Cain. But these are the kind of people that we're dealing with today. They don't know why that their life is cursed. They don't know why that things don't go right. They can't get enough beer. They can't get enough alcohol. They can't get enough sex. They can't get enough money. They can't get enough of anything because the sin nature is a nature of lust, and it's the nature of the devil and you know, you cannot satisfy the devil. You cannot satisfy lust. Lust always wants something that's forbidden. He always wants more than he has to have. That's what it's all about. Okay, I want you to look in verse 11 when we meet Jude again. Let's look at the nature of Balaam. Now, I want to ask you a question. What extremes do you think people will go to today in order to become a famous person. Okay, let me ask you another way. What extremes do you think people will go to today to have money? Big money. Okay. We'll take you there. We'll show you how people today... <clears throat> I heard a man that was talking about bombs one day. I don't want to go into this, but the bombs were blowing up little children and killing babies and the fire going on the bombs and the baby skin was coming off their body. And the doctor walked in and showed this, showed this baby that was the clothing had melted in the baby's skin. 
And the woman said, for Christ's sakes, what is this? I can't stand to see it. He said, I just wanted you to see it. You want to know where it came from? Follow the money. In World War I, you could go back and see who was responsible for selling arms to all the people in World War I. Go back to World War II and find out who Prescott Bush was, who made money, and they shut him down in 1942 simply because he was selling arms to Hitler while we were fighting them. And he was in the Congress. Okay, I'll leave it alone. But the idea is people will do anything for money. So let's talk about this. Go back to me with, with uh, Numbers chapter 22 again. You see why this is such a complex book? People don't have time to do it, and it's like way out there. You've got to do some study to find out what's in this book. Now notice, I want to show you something. What Balaam was willing to do for money, what he was willing to do for pride, and I want to show you, I think there's more than this, but I don't have time to do the whole book. I want to show you about seven sins of Balaam. Balaam is so famous that in Revelations chapter 2, verse 14, it says that the ending of his results, you want me to read it to you, Revelations 2? I'll read it to you because i got my Bible open. I can do that. <clears throat> in Revelations chapter 2, it says, I have a few things of this. This is verse 14. For thou hast them there that hold the doctrine of Balaam. What was the doctrine of Balaam? Look what it says. He taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel and to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. This tells you what his sin was. You wouldn't think that he actually did these things. But in the 22nd chapter, look what it says. In verse number 1, because of time, I don't want to read all of this. But I'll read it from verse 3. Okay, Moab was sore afraid. This was the prince of Moab that we're talking about. His name was Balak. He was so afraid because there were many Israelites... And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. He saw what they had did to the king uh, Og, O-G. He was a great person in those days, and Israel had killed him easily. It says in verse 4, And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, <clears throat> Now shall this Israelites, it's a company, and they shall lick up, up all that's around us, as the ox licketh up the grass and the field, and Balak, the son of Zippor, was the king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers. And then Balaam, the son of Beor, he sent them to Pethor, which is by the river. And that was up by the Euphrates, up in the land, as we know, of uh, Iraq, Baghdad. And the, he says to them, which is by the river, of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people that come out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, abide over against me. Now come, I pray thee, and curse them. Curse these people, for they're too mighty for me. And perhaps I'm going to prevail that we may smite them, that I may drive them out of the land. Because I've heard that he whom thou blessed is blessed, and him who thou cursed is cursed. Now watch what they did, verse 7. Elders of Moab and the elders of Midian, they departed from this place. They went to the place where uh, this Balaam was, and they had the rewards of divination in their hand. What is the rewards of divination? Notice it was tangible. It's money. They had the rewards of money in their hand. Isn't this interesting? They came to Balaam, they spoke to him about the words, and he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, and uh, see what the Lord will speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. <clears throat> this is one of the two sins here. First of all, he had no business talking to them men about this kind of stuff. Secondly, he had no reason to ever consider the rewards of divination. When a preacher goes to the extent of putting money first, 
You went the wrong way. When you consider a counsel outside of God, you're relating to a carnal man or a demon spirit. In this sense, it was both. <clears throat> In verse number nine, and the Lord came to Balaam and said, who are these men with thee? What is this Balaam? And Balaam said, God, you know this Balak, the king of Zippor, king of Moab, he sent unto me with these men, and here's what he said, Lord. He said, there's a people come out of Egypt that covered the face of the earth. Come now and curse me them, and I overcome them, and I'll drive them out of, out of the land. You notice he didn't mention the rewards of divination from verse 7. Number three sin of Balaam is coming to God with such foolish accusations, with such foolish idea. Look what God said to him, verse 12, And God said to Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. You cannot curse the people, for I have blessed them. Thinking that you could change God from something that he already said is ridiculous. Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into the land, for the Lord refused to let me go with you. They went back in verse 14, and they told Balak, and said, Balaam refused to come with us. But now look what they did. And Balak sent, again, the princes more and more in verse 15. And these were more honorable men. So now he's got more honorable men. Instead of the secretary of state, they sent the man right out of the room, right out of the White House. <laughs> and anyway, Balak sent ye the princes, and they were more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus saith Balak, son of Zippor, let nothing I pray thee to come unto me. Look what he said in verse 17. I will promote thee to great honor. <laughs> And I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, and curse me these people. Notice they upped the ante, so to speak. Now you've not got just the rewards of money, but you've also got, I'll make you a great person. I will let you get your own jet airplane and fly across this country. I'll show everybody who you really are. We'll know you're just a great person, Balaam. We will take you and give you your penthouse. We'll give you your 10 or $20 million house, either one you want. You see what he says? I will do, verse 17, whatsoever thou sayest unto me. This was really wicked because God had already told him no. But the desire for Balaam was so strong because he had this lust in him that wanted something that was forbidden. And he was driven at this point with the lust. The only way you can kill lust is to be born again. Verse 18, And Balaam answered and said unto the servant of Balak, If Balak would give me the house full of gold, I cannot go. Beyond the word of the Lord. Now therefore, uh-oh, look what he said in verse 19. I pray thee this night, tarry here, I'll go and see what the Lord was saying to me. At this point right here, I want you to know the next sin because it turned him into a reprobated man. A reprobate man is a man that is turned over to do whatever uh, the Bible said in Romans, God said he withheld nothing from them which they wanted to do. But he goes back and he prays about something that's already well established in the word of God. God had told him with his own words, no, Balaam. But he goes back and you find out people that do this all the time, I feel sorry for them. When they pray about things that's already well established in their Bible, and their excuse is, well, I, I, I didn't read that. Then you should know. Be careful, opening doors in your life, praying about things that God has already well established in the scriptures is not a good idea. So look what God said to him in verse 20. And God came to Balaam at night and said unto him, If these men call thee to arise, God was already angry at this point. Arise and go with them, but yet the word that I say unto thee you shall do. And Balaam rose up in the morning, verse 21, saddled an ass, went with the princes of Moab in verse 22. God's anger was kindled against Balaam. You see that? This is really sad. Anger was kindled against Balaam, and the angel of the Lord went and stood in the, as an adversary against Balaam. God was going to kill him, kill him there. <clears throat> I guess he put it in the hands of the angel. And the 
ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his sword drawn out, and he turned aside and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass. You turned in the wrong way. I didn't tell you to go this way. Verse number 24, And the angel of the Lord stood in a path in the vineyard, and a wall being on one side of him. And when the ass saw the angel again, he thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow way, where there was no way to turn either right hand or the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass again and went to beat on him. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass and said unto Balaam, What have I done to thee? Thou hast smitten me three times. This is bad news. Look what it says. Verse 29. And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there was a sword in my hand, or I would kill thee. And the ass said to Balaam, Am not I thine ass upon whom you have always ridden? I was thine until this day. Have ever I done anything to you? He says, No. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel standing there. Now, to give you a little insight, the Bible said in 2 Peter, I think it is, what is it, 2.16? The Bible said that the madness of the prophet, now, I'm not the one calling him reprobated in his mind. I'm not going to be the one that tells you he was mentally ill at this point. He got turned over to a demon, and the mental illness drove him, and he did not want to turn back. Now he's mentally ill, and Peter said the mental, the madness, he called it madness of the prophet, forbade him, but he spoke to the dumb ass. This is the, what, how many of y'all would like to have a conversation with a donkey? Pretty obvious, this man was out there. This man went off the deep end. Honey, when you used to have an ass talking to you, that's bad enough. When you start talking back to him, that's worse. I mean, what's next? He turned himself over to evil spirits. And I find out a lot of people today, because of money, because of a promise to be high up in this world, they turn themselves over to anything. There's nothing withheld from them that they wanted to do. You find it today. Money and promotion to great honor. That's what they want. I could take you more into this story, <clears throat> but I'll go back to Jude for now. Tell you that this story is very amazing. You see what he 